Hello and welcome to Wild Owl TV. So this is a diary that I should have done a long time ago this year um, and uh, I keep meaning to do it. I think, oh, you know, haven't done that bird feeding diary yet. Um, so with the weather really cold this week, I thought I really must get this out because I'm doing so many video diaries, but actually right now, this is one of the most important ones to do. If you don't know much about feeding garden birds. Now, feeding garden birds is something that lots of people do and it's particularly important in the winter because although we need to remember that birds need to be able to survive on their own um, there are times when we can give them a bit of help to get through the harshest times of the year as we're doing here now uh, in the winter period and particularly now with this very cold weather that's uh, coming to the UK uh, at the end of February so I'm going to go through some of the foods that I'm giving to the birds and just a few little tips. Now this little diary is by no means comprehensive. There's all sorts of things that you can feed wild birds and I haven't got all those foods available. So um, take this as a guide um, and this is kind of what I do here. Um, and we have a wide variety of foods here. One of the most important things to remember is to make sure that you provide fresh water throughout the feeding process, throughout the feeding period, um, and indeed throughout the year, because you'd be surprised how much birds need to drink, particularly if they're, if they're eating dry food, and in particular, food like mealworms. We'll come on to that. So fresh water is always very, very important. Here I'm very lucky I've got the pond and I've got the waterfall. And even though the pond is currently frozen over, which in normal situations wouldn't be very good for the birds because they can't access the water, but because the waterfall is still running, they're still able to drink. But for most of you, you need to provide um, a bowl of some sort, just a dish of water, okay, like we have here, something like that, and make sure that um, that water is... Um, if, it if it freezes, uh, then you can replace it with lukewarm water, not boiling water. Um, and um, just try and make sure that's uh, provided for as much of the day as you can, and the birds will benefit from that. Um, and the same applies, of course, to your garden ornament uh, water. So water is very important. So anyway, let's get on to the, the foods. Now, the thing about feeding birds is that if you can feed a variety of food, you'll find you'll increase the variety of birds that will come into the garden. Um, and we're going to start looking at Niger. Now, Niger is actually thistle seed. So this is a really, really um, nice food. If you want to attract goldfinch or bullfinch, um, I even had some red pole in the garden um, and siskin like them as well. So Niger is a, is a bit of a specific food to offer um, and not all the birds will bother with it. Um, but as I say, if you provide it, you will increase the chances of some of these more colorful varieties. Now, the way that you provide my, Niger, this is a particularly large feeder, it was a birthday present a couple of years ago, but Niger feeders typically are, are a tube like this, maybe not as large as this one, and they've got little holes in the side, only tiny little holes. And what the birds will do is they'll tease out the the seeds through those little holes. And this feeder here, um, if you look back on my video diaries and uh, on some of my photographs, this has been full of goldfinches um, at certain times. So this year has been about eight, eight to a dozen goldfinches all in here all at the same time. Um, so these feeders are really good, specifically for Niger. Now the thing is, I noticed when I was watching the goldfinches, I saw a bullfinch and I thought the bullfinch, because it's got a bigger beak, I didn't know if it could actually get to the Niger. So what I did, I actually put this one up near the, the other. And this is just a conventional uh, seed feed and I've put Niger in there so the bullfinch can, can get access to it. So these two feeders I've put down the bottom of the garden because bullfinches in particular are quite shy birds um, and um, it regularly is used. I haven't seen a bullfinch on this but the, the goldfinches they're on that one this morning. So Niger is a great food. I'm going to bring you on now to striped sunflower seeds. Now I haven't got black sunflower seeds to show you but striped sunflower seeds and black sunflower seeds are relatively cheap to buy. The thing to remember about some of these seeds is that these are very hard husks on the outside and a lot of birds cannot actually get into the seed because they don't eat the husk, the outside part, they break them open and they get to the kernel inside the seed. So a lot of birds, for striped sunflower seed, a lot of birds cannot actually make use of these. So quite frankly, they're a waste. I don't buy them, okay? Black sunflower hearts 
eat though are very good and they're good value but they make a lot of mess and I'm sorry I haven't got any black ones to show you but if you open up a black sun sunflower heart then you end up with these sunflower hearts which is basically the inside kernels these are fantastic and of all the foods to use in your bird garden this one will be a fantastic offering offering it's got high fat lots of birds will eat it um, including pigeons but a lot of species will eat it and although they're more expensive to buy than the black sunflower hearts um, I buy these all the time because they don't create any waste if you use black sunflower hearts you're just gonna end up with a load of black husks on the floor around the feeders which can be a bit messy it doesn't matter but it's just something to bear in mind but these are fantastic and of course the thing is also is because they've already the the husks have already been taken off it saves the birds a lot of energy trying to get into them so they can have more of them faster which then replenishes their energy levels faster so sunflower hearts for me are the top food mixed wild bird seed now the fact that it's mixed gives you an indication that whichever brand you buy you will get a different blend so this is a blend of seeds if you buy cheap you'll get cheap and a lot of what you have in the mix will be fairly useless to most things in fact a good friend of mine um, bought me <laughs> very kindly came over with a large bag last year of um, cheap uh, mixed bird food and it was so bad that even the pigeons didn't eat it and I put it over by the compost heap and it was there for months and eventually just grew into grass so <laughs> buy good quality okay some of them that you'll buy will have um, other things mixed into them some of them will have um, suet pellets or maybe they'll have um, mealworms mixed in there's all sorts of mixes personally I don't I don't buy much of this thing these things I find that if you put in mixed bird food I find that it will just attract a lot of pigeons whereas the sunflower hearts um, I provide more sparingly but I find they're much better for your buck it's just better value better value for you better value for the birds just don't put so much of it out but you know that every single grain is going to be eaten and is going to get used so I mentioned suet pellets suet pellets are fantastic as well because they're high energy high fat and once again eaten by a lot of birds starlings in particular like suet pellets there's all sorts of um, birds that will eat them so i recommend suet pellets and um, again providing them alongside other seeds because variety is the key here they're a really valuable source and like your mixed bird seed and your um, sunflower hearts you can put them into feeders like this now this is a feeder that i bought up the road at nichols uh, cow mills which are in old valley now aren't they um, and the reason i bought it was because the squirrels were doing my head in because they kept damaging my feeders so it's got this cage but the cage removes so if for any uh, period of time you want to um, just get rid of that so that birds can access it easier then you can you can present it like that and it's quite a tough feeder it's got metal um, uh, perches here and i think that's die cast metal as well so it's a bit tougher than some of the cheap ones um, and of course what you can do to prevent mr squirrel getting to it is hang it like that and i find these really really good and these um, grills are still large enough for most things to get in to the seeding so thoroughly recommend that and you can provide um, anything in there niger mixed bird food sunflower hearts suet even mealworms in this type of feeder or mix it up put all sorts of stuff in there you don't have to put everything in in the same time it doesn't matter so they're brilliant moving on to peanuts now there was a time that you could put peanuts up in your garden and going back into the 70s and the 80s and birds would go mad for peanuts but to be quite honest with you i find that now they know about sunflower hearts that never used to be available so freely as they are now um, I don't get so many birds on peanuts and there's only one blue tit that seems to go on the peanut feeder occasionally I'll get the woodpecker on the peanut feeder um, but most of the birds seem to prefer going for the sunflower hearts but peanuts are valuable the problem with them is if you leave them out for too long and particularly when it's raining they will go off they'll go moldy and then they present a risk to birds so be very sparing with your peanuts now 
the peanut feeder is a different feeder again and you'll notice this feeder um, is actually only half full and the reason I've only got it half full is because it just doesn't get the birds just don't get through enough of it uh, to empty it out this will be up for months and it still won't be empty so what I tend to do is I put about that amount in there and I'll leave it out for say two or three weeks I'll keep checking it and if I notice that there's any any mold growing on it I'll just chuck them out and I'll replenish it but I'm not chucking away a whole container full of these a whole feeder full of peanuts um, and another thing to do is shake them around from time to time so you can get some of the um, the fresher nuts onto the outside so they have a place but personally don't go too mad on peanuts again I prefer sunflower hearts but of course peanuts are great for badgers um, and also mice and that so most of my peanuts get eaten by the badgers so let's move on to mealworms now when you go into a pet shop or to a, uh, any place like that you'll see dried mealworms now dried mealworms are a luxury they're high protein this particular dried mealworm mix has actually got shrimps in there as well which they've added in which is fair enough um, dried mealworms are, are liked by robins and, and birds like that um, but they are very dry now what you can do with them is soak them in water so that when the birds are taking them they are also hydrating themselves as well so soaking them in water is always a good thing to do I rarely buy dried mealworms I'll be quite honest um, and that's simply because I'm providing um, seed uh, and I'm providing a few other things here and I think that dried mealworms for me I just feel they're a little bit of a waste I'd rather spend my money on these babies because these are, oops, I just incorporated some pellets in there, live mealworms. Now, yes, of course, they're far more expensive, but then you don't have to provide so many of them. But the difference with live mealworms is, which of course is what they're like before they are dried, live mealworms have got body juices in them, for want of a better description. So they not only provide all of the protein that the birds need and all the energy, but they also hydrate them. And they're of particular value when the birds are breeding because the young fledglings, um, these are virtually caterpillars uh, to the fledglings so live mealworms for me are the best food you can buy at any time of year I don't feed too many in the winter because it can get very expensive but trust me they'll have them all through the year but we're now at the end of February and I have just bought a, a little bit more than I normally buy through the winter but I'm kind of saving up my bucks um, for the breeding season because once that female sits on those eggs the male will be out making sure that she's um, uh, keeping in good condition and then of course the eggs will hatch and they'll need lots of these this is again it's supplementary feeding so you need to be mindful of that when you're feeding birds and this needs to only be done in conjunction with um, providing habitats for the birds, which we'll talk about at the end. I like leave, leave, um, feeding live mealworms, and there's no doubt whatsoever that all the money I've spent on live mealworms this last couple of years has helped the fledge rate of the young birds in the nest. It's definitely helped them survive. There's no doubt about that because of the amount that I get through. And the sparrows and the blue tits and the great tits and the blackbirds and the crows, they're all coming down for them. The robins, of course, as well. And robins are actually nesting um, at the moment. So. Um, you know, as I say, I say it's a bit early to, to, to provide them. Um, in some ways, it probably isn't. Um, I was being mobbed by a robin just now, so at any time we could have a robin. Come on then! I'll just put those there for now. And you might see a robin go on my hand. Is a hand in shot? Yes, yeah, in shot. So, um, what else can I show you? Okay. Now, I mentioned about badgers. Um, hedgehogs may come out when the weather gets a bit milder. Now, when it's cold like that, they possibly won't. Um, but if they do come out a bit early, um, they may want some food. So I think it's a fairly good thing to leave out food like, say, dog food, dog biscuits or cat biscuits on the ground, just a little pile. And if it starts to go, well, OK, it might be a cat, but it's still worth doing in case there are wild animals uh, that can benefit. And I know that last night, my bog badgers, which I posted a video last night of the badgers raiding my, my peanut container, or nearly lost all my peanuts, about 30, 40 quid's worth. Um, 
so they're in a different place now but it just is because the ground is so hard that the badgers can um, get to their natural food and that's why um, I'm seeing oh, there's three in the garden last night so I'm going to put some dog biscuits out for them tonight just to give them some extra food I'll obviously put peanuts out as well um, the trouble with peanuts is by putting out the peanuts uh, if the badgers come in every single one will go but if the badgers don't come in then I've wasted them because then the pigeons have just mopped them up in the morning so consider putting stuff like that for your for your mammals now I'll put these back on the table the other thing to remember is fruit. In very cold winters, there's certain birds that wouldn't normally come into your garden, but once it's really cold and they are struggling um, in the countryside around your gardens, you might see them. And that's birds like field fares and uh, red wings. And these are migrant thrushes that come down from Russia and places like that. Um, and I noticed a few years ago that when we had a lot of snow, it was the one and only time I've seen a field fair in the garden. And the field fair was down there eating the apples I'd put out. Blackbirds like apples. Um, and so fruit is also of great value. So if you eat a core, if you eat an apple, I've just stolen this one from Jackie. <laughs> um, if you eat an apple, um, then just throw the core on the floor um, and the birds will benefit from that. But if you're generous, you just cut the apple in half um, or into sort of quarters and put it on the lawn. That also is valuable food for them and easy to provide. Um, this again is why when you've got um, apple trees and fruit trees and crab apples in your garden, that can benefit uh, lots of birds at different times of the year. And finally, suet blocks. Now you can get the round ones, of course, um, which are fine. Um, and usually you wouldn't provide those round ones in the netting. I don't have any here. Um, I like these. I think this is fantastic. And what I notice with suet blocks is that, I mean, they're only about a pound. If you buy them in the right places, you should only pay about a pound for them. Um, and so um, there are better, some that are better than others. And I've had some that haven't really lasted very well. So you can try more expensive ones and the bigger brands against your cheaper ones. And I know some of the cheap ones I've bought have been pretty rough. Rubbish. And the reason they're rubbish is that actually within a few weeks, they, especially if there's been rain, they tend to start to get a bit mouldy. Uh, so you've got to be careful there. But in terms of um, value for money and value for the birds, these are fantastic. And what you do is you provide them in feeders like this, uh, either that or a smaller one. Um, and you can put th three fat blocks in this particular feeder. And this is great value food for it's high energy um, and most birds will use them i get black caps uh, gold crest robins blackbirds sparrows um, woodpeckers uh, all sorts of birds go on these feeders and what also obviously the blue tits and great tits what i also notice is when the blue tits and great tits in the spring have got their young they won't provide their young seed because it's dried food and their young needs food that is, um, has got some moisture content to them. And they seem to go onto the fat and they'll take suet to their young and feed them that as well as the live mealworms. Okay, so uh, it's a very good food all, round, all year round. Very, very good. So I don't think any wildlife garden feeding birds is complete without your fat blocks in there. So what have I missed? I always miss something. Um, if you know a, a nice young lad locally that likes to uh, make things when he goes on country uh, events, then that, um, Noah, I've still got your feeder and I'm putting stuff in there. Okay, in fact, we'll put some peanuts in there today. There you go, a few peanuts in there, Noah. We'll get those out for the birds. I think I've covered most things. Um, but as I say, the most important thing to remember is providing water, okay? So water for all of these foods, provide water as well. I hope that gives you some pointers. Like I say, it's not comprehensive, but right now is the time to be putting food into the garden. Once we get into the milder weather, have a think about your garden and how it can actually sustain the wildlife without you having to feed them because one day you might well move house and then everything that you've been, that's been depending on you feeding them is going to suddenly, is all gonna stop overnight. And that's why it's really important that as well as supplementary feeding, you do plant um, shrubs and trees and things like that in your garden that can provide fruits and maybe nuts and things like that through the year. 
Okay, so I'm now in the next few weeks, I'm going to be um, looking through some books to see what we can plant in the wild, our TV garden that can add value to the garden where it is. Because at the moment, it still has lots of a long, long way to go in terms of providing for as many creatures as I'd like to provide for. So we're going to be doing a lot of planting. So keep that in mind when you go into the garden center for the first time. But just to finish off, hope you enjoyed this presentation. We didn't get a robin on my... Um, we should get a robin in the wild our TV videos, don't we? Come on then. What's this? You should get a robin on there. <laughs> no, he's not come. I ignored them earlier on because I thought I'll wait until I do this video. So there we go then. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm rambling on again. Thanks for watching Wild Owl TV. I'm Ian McGuire and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.